The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This was essentially Jesus' first recorded sermon and typical of Mark's Jesus. It's concise, there's no explanation or elaboration as to what this means. Nevertheless, this is an impassioned call to personal decision and reorientation of one's whole being. It means radical change in one's mind and heart. Galilee needed to hear the good news of God. Caesar Augustus was being hailed as the good news for the Mediterranean world of the first century because he brought unity and peace to a divided Roman Empire and a warring world. Conquered nations under Rome were able to conduct their national, cultural and religious life as they pleased as long as their leaders paid taxes to Rome and kept the peace in their territories. However, there were various groups in Palestine that refused to submit to Rome. For them, God was the only one who had legitimate claim to their land and nation. They conducted uprisings and guerrilla warfare. The so-called Roman peace in Palestine was an uneasy truce at best. Within this political environment, an itinerant preacher from Nazareth talks about the kingdom of God coming near, and he calls two local fishermen, follow me and I will make you fish for, the pe for people. How many of us would leave our homes, our careers, and follow such a man? These fishermen left the only life they knew and followed into an unknown, risky future reliant on the generosity of strangers for food and shelter. Let's look more closely what this kingdom of God means. It's not referring to an afterlife, but a transformed life on earth. The social and political implications of such an understanding are immense. One's attitude and relationship to the world, nation, family, possessions, and occupation are radically impacted when one's life is opened up to the kingdom of God. One's social world is no longer defined primarily by one's biological family, but by a community of people who have been shaped by the narrative of the kingdom of God. To repent and believe requires a fundamental reorientation and embracing of a whole new set of values and norms. It will change forever the way in which those who respond, the disciples, will view the world and live in it. It is a call to take up the struggle against the strong and all their powers that hold the world and its people captive. Sickness, hatred, poverty, discrimination, the call of the disciples to become fishers of people has a clear connection to the story of Jonah and his missionary exploits in Nineveh. Both in their different times and contexts reflect the urgency of making known the boundless and transforming love of God. Jonah was not happy about the mission for him to go and preach in Nineveh. After all, it was a three-day walk, 19,000 acres, in fact. And they were Assyrians, outsiders. Why did they need them? 
he had been called to expand the membership of believers in God. Now Jonah had previously refused God and it had ended rather badly. So off he went to Nineveh and the people believe and God decided to forgive them. The new year has opened with hideous violence in Paris. There is continued violence in Nigeria and its neighboring states from Boko Haram, while ISIS continues to maintain its program of destruction. Last week, Helen mentioned how she had enrolled in a continuing education program to try and understand more of Islam. I decided to relook at some books I had read a number of years ago written by Karen Armstrong. One was The Holy Wars and the other was A History of God to reacquaint myself with Islamic belief. The Holy War, the Crusades and their impact on today's world, epilogue speaks of the Crusades as a developed response to a period of humiliation and impotence for Christianity during the Dark Ages. It was a radical new departure, having nothing whatever to do with the Pacific religion of Jesus, but it provided the people of Europe with an ideology that restored their self-respect and made the West a world power. Karen goes on to say, feeling against us runs high in the Middle East. It sometimes assumes horrible forms. Nevertheless, we have a responsibility to remain calm and perhaps be more careful of attitudes of prejudice and carelessness. We can no longer afford those words were actually written in 1998. Karen has written a new book, The Fields of Blood, and while I'm yet to read it, a review, in a review I've read, she spoke of our secularization having been applied by force in many regions by Western occupation, has provoked a fundamentalist reaction, and history shows that fundamentalist movements which come under attack invariably grow more extreme. Reflecting on these words from Karen, written over a period of 16 years, Mark's gospel resonates. Jesus' message of the kingdom gave hope to a disenfranchised Palestine and the fishermen, Simon, Andrew, James, and John followed as the alternative was not living life as God and the Torah had instructed. Are the followers of ISIS, Boko Haram, and other insurgent groups not exhibiting similar desperate behavior? How do we respond to these acts of violence? Some respond with grace and mercy, while others have responded with vile assumptions and hateful rhetoric. We in our democratic nations have the right to freedom of speech. None of us, however, have the right to attack others for their belief with violence and hatred. I think this is an opportunity to look at our behavior towards others, and this is something we can consider now in the time of Epiphany and its divine revealings. This week, we have lost the theologian Marcus Borg. Many of you will have read his work 
or heard him quoted from this pulpit. And I would like to read one of his quotations. To be Christian means to find decisive revelation of God in Jesus. To be Muslim means to find the decisive revelation of God in the Quran. To be Jewish means to find the decisive revelation of God in the Torah, and so forth. To be Christian in this kind of context means to be deeply committed to one's own tradition, even as one recognizes the validity of other traditions. The kingdom of God comes with repentance, and that repentance requires change and transformation. Cynthia Bourgeau, in her book, The Wisdom Jesus, suggests that to achieve the kingdom requires a whole new way of looking at the world. It requires a transformation of awareness that literally turns the world into a different place. We may have some exploring and transforming ahead of us this year. <laughs>